Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Financial Literacy 101. Protect yourself, wear your helmet. Well, you know, why am I sit up here wearing a bike helmet? You know, we always talk about investment. We always talk about stocks, bonds, index, ETS fund, individual stocks. Uh, good, e good afternoon, Miss Curly Girl. We always talk about these things. And a lot of times, um, I don't use a lot of props, but I like using props every now and again to drive home. Uh, the point in this, because we don't understand sometimes when someone is just talking at us, um, sometimes we don't even understand when people are talking to us. So sometimes every now and again, I like to bring out some props to make it more realistic for you, because when we talk about finances, you, you're not understanding that finances and making sure that your finances are stable will help you protect yourself. In a time where finances may not be stable, when the economy may not be stable. See, we'll wear a helmet wearing a bike, but we don't wear a helmet when it comes to our finances. Why, why don't we do that? Why don't we take the same analogies, right? Let's take, for instance, this bike helmet is for bonds. It's for bonds because the bonds you investing in those government and corporate bonds are going to be protection in a down market. It's going to be protection in a recession. You're still going to make a small return nine times out of 10 because we know that bonds are loans to that government entity and also that corporation. I really don't deal in junk bonds because we understand that in junk bonds, you may lose a lot of money because they're very, very risky. Now, that's what we're talking about bonds, okay? That's your bike helmet. Nice like little bike helmet. Yeah, I used to bike and I used to ride 20, 50, and even one time I rode 90 miles in one day. I'm not Lance Armstrong. I'm Black Armstrong. <laughs> I know it was corny. I know it was corny. But that's how we have to think about it. We wear a helmet for almost everything. Now, granted, some of you may not wear a bike helmet. I wear a bike helmet because I want to protect the dome, okay? I want to protect the dome. What's another helmet that we can wear when it comes to our finances? Now, we talked about bonds. What about CDs? You don't really hear me talk about CDs, but CDs is a good little way if you put away maybe uh, $1,500 to $2,000 and it's going to give you 2 or 3% on your return. But if you're going to do CDs, that is another helmet. Like this helmet right here, right? This is more like um, a skateboarder's helmet or a scooter. This is my scooter helmet, okay? This is my scooter helmet. Yeah, I have a helmet for everything because... I'm trying to protect my head. I'm trying to protect what's most precious on my body. This is what all the information is. This is your CPU, okay? This is your computer and everything else are your accessories. You know, your arms could be your mouse. But we have to understand that to be financially stable, you need helmets of protection around your investments, right? Whether they be individual stocks, or even sometimes mutual funds, even though I don't like mutual funds, I know some of you with your 401ks and IRAs because the market and the way that it moves up and down also determines the return of your percentages with your 401ks and your IRAs. You need a helmet of protection. That can be actually CDs. Okay. So we went bonds and we got CDs. So yeah, could I bring out more helmets? I could and I will. When you go snowboarding, okay, nice little helmet, all furry inside, very, very warm. This is another helmet, okay? And if you notice, with all my helmets, I'm buckling up the chin strap, okay? I'm buckling up the chin strap because that's what you need. You need your investments to be secure. Now, th this helmet has a little warm, fuzzy things here, and this is not a review about helmets, guys. I'm just showing you that I have a helmet for everything, and that is what you need for your investments. I had to take that one off. It was so hot. <laughs>
but you need a helmet for your investments. Because sometimes I didn't bring out my other helmet, which is my war helmet, my military helmet, but you need a helmet in a time of a downturn market. And some of you are not doing the basic things. You want to go straight in with your investments. You don't want to build that base. I always talk about building that base. And when it comes to just the investment piece, you need to build a base of protection. You need a helmet of protection. And that protection is your bonds, your CDs, your index and ETF funds, and some real estate. Now, when you want to deal in riskier stocks, because there may be some information you received or some innovation that came out that this stock may balloon up 20, 30, 80%, just like Beyond Meat did, just like Snapchat when it first came out. All of these ballooned up, then they came tumbling, tumbling, tumbling down. Even with Tilray, I invested in Tilray and it ballooned up and then my dumb butt invested and then it crashed when Donald Trump put the tariffs on the Chinese stocks, on the Chinese country, essentially. And my stocks went tumbling down. I lost a lot of I lost a lot of money in Tilray. And the reason why I lost money in Tilray is because I sold my Tilray. We understand that you don't lose money on a stock or a share unless you sell it. The only thing you lose is the value because the value can go up and the value can go down. We understand that. All right, who we have in the chat room? We have uh, Davey D. Crowder. Uh, good evening, too, as well as you, sir. Uh, we have Original Redhead. Uh, good evening. I don't know if that's a male or female, but good evening to you as well. Um, yeah, if you have, if, if, you, if any of you guys have a question, please leave it in the chat. Here's another topic. A lot of times you guys always hear me talk about do your own research. I'm here to inform you. And in some cases, I may educate you on a topic or information that you may not know of. But with that said, I'm going to contradict myself, okay? I'm letting you know now, I'm going to contradict myself because I am not here to educate you. See, I have a certain purpose, and my purpose is to inform you. My purpose is to educate you. My Purpose is to let you know something that you may not know, or you may know something, but I may give you a different spin. I may give you a different terminology. I may give you a different way of looking at it. With that said, you hear the contradiction said, I am not here to educate you, but I educate you. And the purpose why I'm saying that is because at the end of everything I say, I want you to do your research, okay? Because in the financial world, in the financial market, I may have my informational data. I may have all this information and the very next day it changes. See on my channel, I receive comments of videos I've done two or three years ago and people will ask me certain questions. Okay. They will ask me certain questions like, Hey, this is no longer like this. I'm like, did you see the video that it was 2016 information, especially when it comes to economics changes almost every day. So you have to do the research during that time that you're trying to move the way you're moving in your finances, because I may just give you a base. I may just inform you of a topic, but financial information is, is living. It's always changing just in every day. Just like you, you change each and every day. So in that sense, you have to really be cognizant of the information, but you have to dive deep. You have to do a deep dive and do your own research. Now, granted, if I'm giving you information and you go out the same day, 99% of the time, the information is good. And I try to give unbiased information. Now, the reason why I say unbiased, and that could be slightly contradictory too, because I'm looking at it from my perception, okay? What I mean is I'm not going against the grain or anything or anyone. I take all information, I bring it in, I say, what is best for me? What is best for you guys? What's going to help you? bolster your financial portfolio so you can sit fat and happy in your retirement or something that you may use to start your own business. Now, I'm in the process of doing that. I know a year or two ago, um, I was very slow in the way that I threw things, but I'm feeling more ready to go out and actually start my own business and do it, things in my financial world. And the things that I'm doing, right? 
I'm trying to see if it's really beneficial to start an LLC. Even though I have my LLC EIN number, and I'm also making an official logo for Ross World. So there's some things that I'm actually doing as a base. If you notice the way my mind works is that I like to build that support structure before I go and dive deep, right? Because a lot of times what we do, what you may do in the business world is you may go ahead and start a business, but you don't have a logo. You didn't trademark it. You you didn't um, copyright your name. There's a lot of things that you need to do. And some of these things, unfortunately, can be quite difficult or it may be costly. But if you're trying to build a brand, right, if you're trying to build a brand to stand behind and to grow from, then these are some of the things you need to do in America to protect yourself so people don't steal you. Something that you have been, you know, nurturing from the ground up. It's kind of like your finances, right? Business and finance go hand in hand. But you have to treat it as though you're, they're your kids. Because you know that your kids, your, 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 young, your young men and women, you have to nurture them. When they're going outside, riding on their bike or their skateboards, you're giving them a helmet, a protection, that helmet. You're, sometimes you're giving them elbow pads and knee pads because you don't want them to get hurt. You don't want them to get hurt. So take your own advice and protect yourself by helmet of financial stability. You need to do those things to set yourself up. Whether you're trying to start a business, copywriting and patent, and also trademarking yourself, okay, and, and building your brand, or you're going to deal with your bonds, your ETFs, your index, and your real estate and some CDs. This is how you build a support structure. Then it's more easy to go out and actually invest in those very risky shares that you may become a millionaire or a hundred thousand there, or you may lose it all, but you still have that protection because you have a large portion of your money in that support base. Okay. In that support base, we did be one of those. And that's why I always say you need an emergency fund because emergency, you don't know when it's going to happen. See, you ever broke down the word accident, accident, and someone actually blame you for the accident now you may have been the cause because you was texting on your phone while you was driving or you was eating or you was doing your hair or you was video chatting there's so many causes of why you probably caused the accident but essentially you didn't mean to call the you didn't mean to cause the accident you was probably distracted but nevertheless an accident occurred that's kind of like an emergency you don't plan for emergencies to happen now, you might have done some things that you shouldn't have done that emergency resulted from that action, but you didn't want it to happen, but it did. And that's why it's important to have an emergency fund. Now, we always go with the, the basically the nationwide amount that everybody knows, three to six months of all your expenses in a savings account, right? Not an investment account. In a savings account, something you can go dig in and take right out. The other part of that, is at least 10,000. Because listen, listen, the reason why I say that, some of you say, well, $10,000 is a lot of money. It is. But I want you to tally up six months of all your expenses. That's your car. Note your gas for your car. What about your two or three month oil change? What about your house, house insurance, and all the other bills associated with your house, like your utilities, your sewer, your gas, your trash, your electric, et cetera, your water bill. What about if your kids are in programs that you're paying for? What if your kids go to private school? Have you factored that in your expenses? Because guess what? You're like, well, uh, if they're, no, you're going to have to pay for their school bill unless you paid it for a whole entire year. But most parents pay it by semester or monthly. So these are the things that you need to you need to think about when you're saving for your emergency fund. That is another helmet of protection. You know what? You just need a helmet, man. Yeah. And some people think people look uh, silly wear, wearing helmets. But I'm going to tell you, if you ever fell off a bike and you bumped your head and you didn't have a helmet, didn't it hurt? Now, I fell off my bike. <laughs> And it was funny, but 
I had a few scrapes, but my head was still protected. I didn't have a concussion. I didn't have a cracked skull. I didn't have a traumatic brain injury. I didn't have any of those because I wore my helmet. Because I wore my helmet. And you need to wear your virtual, you need to wear your virtual financial financial helmet in order to protect yourself. Because some of you want to dive right deep into investment. And I applaud you. I really do because you're there. You're ready to jump in. But Sometimes in order to take two steps forward, you need to take a step back and do the things to set yourself, set yourselves up for success and not be a part of your own financial demise. Let me read some of your notes. All right. Thank you, Miss Curly Girl, for uh, recapping what I'm saying. Protect your investment with bonds, CDs, index funds and real estate. Um, information regarding economic changes consistently. Be sure to do your own research. Congrats on starting in business. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for letting the people know to subscribe and like the video. I appreciate that. We understand that when we like a video, we bring other people into the discussion so we can have an intelligent discussion about finances where you guys ask questions or even chime in with your success stories and other business adventures for you guys. And here, here's another thing, guys. If you guys are entrepreneurs or you are inspiring entrepreneurs, then leave some information and promote your business in the chat. I tell people I'm total transparent. We are all here together for one simple goal. Money minded, money minded. None of you guys want to be working in your 60s. And if you're in your 60s, you don't want to be working. OK, so most of us, we want to retire in our 40s and our 50s, where we are generally still looking great. We're generally still in, in good health and we want to go and travel the world, eat delicious foods from everywhere and have a great time, okay? And none of us don't want to work, okay? Now, some of you may want to work depending on your industry or your job, but you may not want to do it all the time. And you you might not want to have to feel like, I have to go to work because I need the money. Now, some of you may have to go to work because you just simply love it, but you have the choice. And that is what this is about. So you have a business. If you have ideas, well, no, don't don't give people your ideas. People might steal them in the chat. <laughs> I might write them down too. Cause you know, your boy keep index cards on point. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. But anyway, that is the point. So we need to understand that wearing a helmet when it comes to our finances, protect us, protect us in a market downturn. And also when the economy fails, right? We understand that between uh, 2008 and 2010, but mainly 2008 and 2009, America went through a recession. People lost homes, businesses went out of business, and the uh, car industry, the automotive industry, as well as the real estate industry and the bank industry was damn near bankrupt. And who bailed them out? The American people, because we say, oh, the government bailed them out. No, 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 no. You bailed them out because what money you think the government use? Yeah, they use your tax money to bail out the automotive industry as well as the real estate industry, as well as the banking industry. They use your hard working dollars to bail those guys out. But I actually understand why it was done because think about it like this. If they didn't bail them out, our whole bank structure would have crumbled. Our whole real estate structure would have crumbled. So I understand. And plus, the government got the money back with interest. OK, they paid the money back with interest. So I didn't really disagree with that. I dissected it and I'm like, well, if this doesn't happen, would it leave opportunities for other good banks to rise up? We know that the banking industry, the real estate industry can somewhat be shady. And that's why you have to really do your research on the people you do business with. That's why when you go on financial channels, on social media, or maybe on a blog, this is a time where you guys can build your own economic structure, right? With other people that you may need. Like, take for instance, take for instance, Miss Curly Girl is a mobile notary. She's a mobile notary. So if you are in her area, you can contact her and she can come out and notarize things. And who knows? She may give you a discount. But see, you guys need to put out there in the atmosphere. What is your business? What are you trying to do in your finances? Because you may build a family that you trust. And even though you met them online, 
shoot, you meet a lot of people online. You meet your loved ones online, your family members online. You, you talk to all types of people online, okay? So this is a great platform for you to do so. I'm not above it. I'm not going to erase your messages. Do some business, okay? Do some business. Get your finances up. But when you're talking about wearing a helmet for your protection, this take some of that advice, do your own research, and understand what I'm talking about. But the, I'm going to tell you, in a downturn market, the best money that you can have or have is an emergency fund. Is an emergency fund. And the other thing that I failed to mention is another helmet of protection is actually having real silver and real gold. I did a video. I did two videos on precious metals and how those could be investments if the economy just collapsed. Because the world still deals in gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. I'm just going to give you that nugget. You get it? Nugget of gold? Nug anyway. So the point I'm trying to make here, guys, is if you're not setting yourself up for success, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And before you take two steps forward, you may need to take a step back and set up that financial stability structure that's gonna hold you up when everything hits the fan. All right, David D. Crowder says, I sure wanna retire 40. Where you from, boy, you from the South? I'm not making fun of you. I just try to do accents to live up the chat because you guys don't really say nothing. You just hear me running my mouth. But anyway, uh, Dave, uh, David D. Crowder says, I sure wanna retire 40. Um, Ms. Curly Girl says, true, networking is everything in business. It, it truly is. Um, those relationships can actually turn into real friendships. And I'm not saying that is what you should strive for. But if you're sitting at home or you're sitting at work or you're on your commute home and you're not trying to figure out to better your situation, then what are you doing? What are you doing? If you believe that you're going to go to your nine to five, whether it's that time or not, but your nine to five and you're going to grind your way to the top, you are absolutely wrong. If you're not doing things on your own personal time to better yourself, because at the end of the day, I believe everybody should have a side hustle. I believe that everybody should have something where if, I don't know, the moon blows up, right, <laughs> that you'll have something to fall back on. That is what you need to do. If you have a buttload of money in the bank, or you have a side hustle that if you were to get laid off, you could do that more, okay? Or you have a skill or you have some sort of experience that you can go out and do something on the side or even for a main job. And, and those are things that we need to actually look for, okay? Miss Curly Girl, you say you're a Southerner too? Man, I'll tell you, them damn rib down there. In the, I went down to Texas. Let me tell you something I went down there to Texas, okay? I went down there in Texas and I had some ribs from one of them smoke houses, and I believe they were using mosquito, they were using god darn it, uh, who were they were using, uh, they were using, uh, oh, applewood, that damn applewood, I tell you, you smoked it, not tw he tell you, about 12 hours, he smoking a damn applewood, I said, man, them that damn ribs falling right off the bone. All right, that's my impression of a southerner, even though that everyone doesn't sound like that, but this is my way. Quite frankly, guys, I'm gonna leave you with this. I want you guys to be successful in the business that you have. But before you dive out there, you don't have to take as long as I did. But before you guys dive out there, please do your research and get accurate and informative and up to date information. OK, and up to date information. I'm doing research. I'm reading. I'm doing the things to set myself up for success. Does it mean that I will be successful? No, it won't. But I'm a sure give it a damn good try. I'm a sure give it a try. Because I've been tiptoeing, I've been sneaking around corners way too long, and it's time to swallow it and step out. But you always need to prepare yourself for a fight. You need to prepare yourself and train and learn before you dive deep. And that is what I did. But I took too long. Sometimes you can overtrain. You ever been in the gym and you just did bicep curls too long, you did bench press, or you was on the elliptical or the treadmill way too long and you overtrained and you tore a muscle or you overworked yourself and you were sore for day, more days than you planned to be sore? I've been overtraining. So now I took a step back and I said, you know what? I'm just going to start doing the steps that I need to do to set myself up. I have my protection. I'm wearing my helmet. I have everything in place. 
I'm decent. I am okay. But now it's time to take that step forward. Now it's time to take that step forward. Uh, David Crowder says he's from Mississippi. Born matches, born matches, he says, real estate, stocks, and precious metals. Indeed. Indeed. And when I say stocks, um, born matches, I'm talking about index and ETFs. And we're talking about that base structure to protect yourself, wearing that helmet of protection over your finances, not individual stocks, right? There are some individual stocks that always do well, but we know index funds and ETFs, they primarily do well all the time, okay? Uh, let's see what else you got. See, Texas ain't got nothing on Georgia. Here we go. Okay, we're going to get into a battle of the states, okay? Put it this way, Miss Curly Girl. Ain't none of us from here anyway. <laughs> I know you'll get that. I know you'll get that. But anyway, guys, hopefully I've given you some information to help you go out and be better in your finances. OK, if you need help in your finances, I have my email in the description as well as other links for investment platforms that you can sign up for and get the ball rolling. These are either free or a very nominal fee, okay, very a frugal price that will cost you basically a dollar or less when it comes to starting off, okay? Whether it be in um, real estate and investment trust like Fundrise, or you have your M1 Finance, you have Wealth Simple. There's another one called Ground Investment, a ground floor investment. Another subscriber mentioned that the other day, and I actually did look at it. Um, I got to do a little more research on it, but it seems promising. They're promising. I mean, they're sure they're promising anywhere up to uh, ten percent, but we know how that goes. Investments. There's no guarantee in investments. Okay, so look in the description for my email. If you want letters to help you with your credit score, if you want letters to help you to get uh, rid of or alleviate a student loan or a pay deletion letter, just make a request through my email address below, which is. Blacklogic28 at protonmail.com. That's blacklogic28 at protonmail.com. And if I have the information, I will send it to you freely. I'm not going to send you a link for you to pay me money. The only money that I ever accept are donations, and that is on your own free will. Um, another nugget of information I have for you guys, I'm actually going to make some merch. Um, right now, um, I have a person working on a logo. And uh, with that logo, I'm going to make a T-shirt. And I think every now and again, I'm going to come out with a different design, not the logo, but a different color, different design on the T-shirts. And then I will be selling those T-shirts. Now, the price may vary. But hey, listen, I'm going to be wearing the shirt sometimes. If you want a shirt, I give you the price plus uh, shipping. I may make a couple of dollars off it. Now, and I mean like a couple, like three, four, five dollars. It takes me more money to send it to you than with you to buy it. If we believe in the same thing, then you should support the merch brand. If not, hey. You know I ain't going to brag on you. But with that all said, I hope the information that I'm providing to you has given you value in your life and also in your personal life that is for yourself and also your family. So if you don't have any questions, I'm going to get out here. It says, is rich uncles good? Here's a question. Was well, about to get off. Anyway, <laughs> born majesty asks, is rich uncles good? Rich, rich uncles is really good. It's really good. I even have the game here. Okay. Um, I haven't I haven't really cracked it open yet. This is from the Rich Uncles brand. Okay. If you look at the top, was it top right? That's the Rich Uncles brand. This is the game to understand cash flow. Is this good? Yes. But but I need for you to start obtaining if you don't already have it financial intelligence because you can learn from everybody but that that doesn't mean that that investment or that financial information machine is good for you he's basically telling people to use debt as an income for cash flow does that methodology when it comes to finance and real estate work yes it does okay but he also has a book to say that fake assets fake teachers and fake assets, meaning uh, mutual funds, index, 401ks, RAs, and stocks and bonds and all of that, that you need to invest into real investments, real assets like 
real estate property, not a real estate investment trust and precious metals and owning businesses, et cetera. I agree with that. But I also agree because I know other people who have millions in the bank when they cashed out on certain stocks, when they traded in their 401k, that they have millions in their savings account that is actual money that they're buying a house and a car and going on vacations with. So my whole thing is draw all the information out, draw all the information in and then filter it what's good for you and your financial future because this may not be the road you want to take. It may be another road. There are so many, there are so many roads of success. And that's why we talked on a broad amount of financial topics because you can take any of those roads. We can be on the same highway. We can be on the same highway, but we all may get off at a different exit and still end up at the same destination from what we perceive it is. It's called success. Now, granted, I always tell you to mimic, mirror, emulate people in your industry that you want to go into or that you're in and you want to be successful and not just one person and not just one person. Look at many people because it's a formula. It's an equation. You may have to look at it in different ways to break it down that may work for you because his, his the way he worked may not work for you because maybe he came from a rich family. He already had $15 million to start off with. But maybe you grew up poor like myself from Southeast DC. And maybe this other guy did too. And he worked from the ground up. Look for his email, reach out to him or watch his videos or follow his blog. However you see fit, there's many roads to success. We may be on the same highway and get off at different exits but still end up at the same destination, which is success. All right. Um, Baldwin, a baker says, yo, my man. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. <clears throat> I've been chatted and I rambled enough. But again, the topic was today, protect yourself, wear your helmet. And we're talking about bonds, CDs, ETFs, index funds, and real estate, okay? And precious metals, and precious metals. And then once you have all of that, excuse me, let me back up. Prior to having all of that, make sure you have your emergency fund. That's your three to six month of all your expenses or at least $10,000. Then start to set up your protection for your financial structure before you deep dive and go head in on risky stocks. All right. You're welcome, Born Majesty. My pleasure. So this is Financial Literacy 101. My name is Ross World. I'm building a brand here. I'm going to make a logo. I'm going to have some T-shirts. And uh, hopefully one of you buy them, you know, and wear it at your job and say 1-800-ROSS-WORLD. No, it's not going to be nothing corny like that. But anyway, guys, I got to get out of here. Um, God bless you guys. I love you guys. And I'll see you next time, okay? All right. I'm out.